Welcome to Soil Structure Engineering Problems YouTube channel. So in this lesson, we are going to see how powerful can be the isotropic bilinear uh, elastoplastic model to simulate um, an interaction between an structure and a soil. We are going to cover a very simple problem again, but it's going to be very illustrative to see the difference between a linear elastic model, an isotropic linear elastic model, and an isotropic bilinear elastoplastic model. So this is the, the setup of the problem in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. So I have an isotropic linear elastic model for a pile in contact with a soil, a soil that is divided in two layers, as we are going to see in the geometry, and exactly the same problem is a set as well with a bilinear elastoplastic model. So if we check the engineering data for, for this problem, and before that is, I think it's gonna be better to, to check the geometry. So let's open the, the geometry. This is the geometry of this problem. So basically it's um, a soil divided into layers and an isolated pile in the middle for this three-dimensional analysis. So if I use a section, I will see better inside the pile inserted with the, in the first layer of soil, the second layer of soil. And as you see, um, something important in these models are that the gap between the piles and the soil need to be very small in order for ANSYS Wurben to create good connections. So this is basically the geometry. So um, if you want to see or you want to know the dimensions, the diameter of these piles is 500 millimeters. The um, length is uh, 7,320 millimeters. The first layer of soil is um, is about the same length. Is the length of the pile plus one meter and a half. And the second layer of soil is uh, a soil of 70, uh, five, uh, 7,500 millimeters or 7.5 meters. So this is the geometry of this problem. So very simple in terms of geometry. So we have two different soils. So we need to, to then to define these, um, these two soils. The first model, which is isotropic uh, linear elastic, will define then the, um, as a material I call pile concrete, a material that is isotropic, elast uh, which is isotropic elasticity in ANSYS Workbench. So I define the value for the Jan modulus, in this case is uh, 30,000 megapascals. The Poisson ratio I'm using is 0 0.15. For the first layer of soils, I will use a Jan modulus of 19 megapascals. The Poisson ratio is 0 0.3. And for the second soil, I will use the Jan modulus 52.8 and the Jan and the Poisson ratio 0 0.4. As you see, both layer of soils in this model, the model elastic will be just isotropic elasticity because uh, we are defining only these two parameters. So this is evidently is um, an isotropic model. And so we are not going to be able to, to capture any, any plastic deformation in this, in this model. If you go to the um, bilinear isotropic elastoplastic model um, uh, materials, so definition, so in there, I will have exactly the same material for the pile as before, but the soil of the failed layer will be in the first instant linear elastic with the same parameters as before. But for the plastic um, regime, I'm going to define a yield strength of 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.05 megapascals and the tangent module is 0 0.5 megapascals for this model. So we are going to have a bilinear behavior then that will be isotropic. This is important to, to notice. So same behavior in every direction of the three-dimensional space. So we have an elastic regime and we have a plastic regime defined by the second line of this bilinear model. The same thing will happen with the second year, layer. So I will use the same parameters for the plastic um, regime 
or the, the, the plastic area of this material and I will preserve the same elastic parameters for the elastic regime as in the previous example for consistency and to make a proper comparison. So I have run already the two models for saving time. So let's see what we have in terms of what we need to simulate first in the first place. So this problem is uh, an isolated pine inserted in a first layer of soil and there is another um, layer of soil under. And what we have as a data is a certain test results that uh, are expressed in seven um, load steps, let's say. So you have the series of loads and the corresponding displacement. This is the maximum displacement that this uh, pile presents when it's subjected to a vertical load on top that is acting and is producing these uh, deformations you, have, you see here. So in terms of the test, this is what you are going to, to see as a curve. So this, remember, the maximum displacements in this pile. And you see that evidently the relationship between the displacements and load is, is not linear. So this is not um, this, uh, this actual problem because this is a test. So it's a reality. It's not presenting any um, linear elastic behavior. But sometimes we need to use uh, linear elastic models to, to study this kind of problem because we don't have any, any other option. So this is the, the behavior in terms of displacement and loads, so evidently non-linear. And um, because we are talking about soils in here, the deformation won't be recoverable, so it's not going to be elastic. So this behavior is evidently um, plastic. What we can recognize, however, is that in the first instance, we have a sort of um, behavior that is not exactly linear, but we can say that we can approximate with a, with a straight line from this point where we have um, zero displacement and until, let's say, 400 kN of low, we can say that this is more or less linear and can be studied by, with a, an isotropic linear elastic uh, model, for example. But from this point where we have applied more than 400 kilonewtons of load, we see that there is a sudden change in the behavior of this material. So this is evidently a plastic uh, regime already. So we will need a more sophisticated model in this area to be uh, able to reproduce this, um, this um, behavior. So if we use, um, let's say, a linear elastic an isotropic model for the soil and for the piles, and this is the case in the first model. Um, so you see that I have uh, the the geometry of um, of my problem. So the pile inserted in the first layer of soils and the second layer under in here. So um, the geometry is well defined, so in terms of uh, connections, the software have uh, created the connections between the piles and the soils and between the two layers of soils. So this, this is not an issue. You see that the software, well, was able to, to mesh the problem properly because I was defining in here a series of um, improvements in the mesh to have more density of elements and to have a control in the sizes of the elements. Uh, in a, in a way that I have defined it based on my experience. And, and after that, what we have in terms of setup is um, an analysis that has seven different um, steps, log the steps, because I'm trying to, to basically to replicate this curve in here. So because I have the information from the test in seven steps, I decided that the simulation should be following the same, the same pattern. So once, um, the forces are defined in the, um, in these uh, seven different uh, load steps, as you can see here. For some reason, I'm having some sort of no. So there is a problem in here because the um, the loads are not the loads that are supposed to be. So what I'm going to do, I will introduce uh, this data right now 
So the first load should be 125,000 newtons. The second load should be 200,000 newtons. As you see, uh, when, you, when you set up a series of uh, load steps, you have a table in here to, to introduce the data. So the next is 230,000 newtons. The fourth is 400,000 newtons. The fifth load will be 525,000 newtons. The sixth load will be 600,000 newtons. And finally, 660,000 newtons, the last load. So I will recalculate uh, this to, to match the, the load state I have in the, in the test in here. So because this is a linear elastic and isotropic model, the, the running won't take long because it's a, it's a, it's a model that is relatively simply, simple in terms of um, of equations and all the equations are linear so we are using here the model that is simply uh, calculating stresses multiplying the stiffness matrix times the, the strain and the strains are calculated from the displacements that the software uh, solve in the first instance so this is the uh, one of the things that are very attractive about linear elastic and isotropic models that they are very efficient in terms of, of calculation, so they are very quick um, in terms of having or uh, producing solutions. But of course, there are as well a series of disadvantages when we use linear elastic models and isotropic. In the first place, in here we are talking about a problem in soils. So the in reality, the layers of soils are not going to be isotropic, the most probably. Um, the other problem is that the soil is, in essence, a plastic material or an elastoplastic material, if you want. Um, but um, so we are not going to be able to reproduce exactly what happened in reality. But as a first approximation and as a tool, when we don't have any other choice, it's um, the linear elastic isotropic model is, uh, is a model that gives you enough information to make decisions. So as you see now, the, the mathematical uh, problem is, is already solved, even with a big number of elements we are using in this, in this mesh. Um, ANSYS Warband solved the problem using the final element method. It's another thing I can comment during this process of uh, the software is now, now writing the results. So in a few seconds, we are going to have all the results post-process it, and we're going to be able to check so now I'm happy with the, with the load I have applied because these are the loads um, from the test we have. So now we have um, in here the post-process of the maximum and minimum deformation of this pile for every single load um, I have simulated in this case. And additionally, I have as well the distribution of the bone misses stress, stresses on the soil because this is a, a stress that is... A, usually use to, to do analysis and but in this case we don't want to go farther than just to see that this uh, model was able to simulate um, let's say in a simplistic way this problem so taking this information or this deformation uh, in terms of the loads applied I can fit my spreadsheet and what I can do is I can show you, for example, the results um, of this linear elastic model. Just give me a second to process something here. So, no, it's, it's okay. So, basically, I have... Um, Feed this um, Excel with the results from the simulation. So, for example, just let me show you here so that these values are the values from the software. So, 
this one is for the for the last one is for uh, 5.9 the first one for 125 kilonewton this is 112 so you can see in my spreadsheet i have fit i have fed the the spreadsheet with the values from the simulations doing that i'm able to show the results of my isotropic linear elastic model which is a simulation remember it's not a reality so it's just a simplistic model to reproduce reality and you see the limitations in here in a very clear way. So with the parameters I have used and that they are supposedly parameters from studies from the geotechnical um, test in the lab, I have been able to, to make a model that produce this uh, relationship between displacements and load, which is linear because the, the model is isotropic and linear elastic. So this model is not able to capture the, let's say, the, the change in behavior from elastic to plastic. It's not able to uh, reproduce uh, neither the, the fact that the deformation would be permanent in some, at least in, in some percentage, more or less 98% of the deformation in this problem will be, will be permanent because we are talking about soils. And um, so, even when we have an idea of um, an approximation about settlements, for example, the settlements are not very well calculated and are, they are not accurate because uh, we are far from the actual settlement that this pipe is presenting in reality when we compare with the model. Because the model is, of course, limited. So what we can do uh, as a first um, improvement in this model is to use a bilinear model that we have studied uh, before um, with this uh, steel bar in one dimensions and, and, and we have learned um, a few things about the model so in here in the second in the second model I have set in ANSYS workbench I have precisely that so I have the same material for the pipe concrete as the as before but the layers of soils now are material that have uh, that are defined by a bilinear isotropic elastoplastic model so if we see the um, definition of these materials in more details in ANSYS and in the engineering data for example this is the model for the first layer of soils where i have added the yield strength and the tangent model as have been uh, showing before and the second layer have these additional two parameters as well, the yield strength and the tangent modulus to create this uh, bilinear isotropic elastoplastic model. So if we now check the results of that, uh, of this uh, model for the same um, set of load as before, you will notice that this uh, model produce uh, results that are not um, linear as before and that the distribution of the bond misses of stresses is different because there is a, a process of plastification in the model that is reproducing a more uh, accurate uh, behavior than uh, the previous one. And if we fit the, the, the spreadsheet with the results of the simulation, and let me just unhide this column, we see that in comparison, of course, at the beginning, we have a very similar result because at the beginning, the, the, the elastic regime is the only one that is activated. But after certain levels of loads, approximately at this level, uh, we start noticing massive difference with differences between um, the linear elastic isotropic model and the bilinear elastoplastic model. So if we translate this to to a curve in this space of displacements and load, you see that the bilinear model is um, in comparison to the linear elastic model much more powerful. So it's able to, to reproduce this um, curvature in here. Um, this model uh, is still um, not uh, close enough to reality, but with a little bit of more calibration by modifying a little bit the Young modulus, the Poisson ratio, and especially the um, parameters for the plastic regime, we are going to be able to capture exactly the behavior of this uh, this pile that is being um, 
been settled because the vertical loads. So, and the other advantage of this bilinear model that is that it's able to um, to capture and to calculate the plastic deformations. So, um, clearly, the bilinear model, even when it's isotropic, even when need only two more parameters to be defined, is a powerful model when you are dealing with soils and we are, when you are dealing with soil structure interaction problems. So um, I hope this, um, this, um, this example help you to understand a little bit more about how important it is to introduce a concept of plasticity in your soil structure interaction models. And that's all basically. So thank you very much for watching and I will hopefully be um, again soon um, providing another video with more interesting models to, to resolve problems in soil structure interaction. So uh, before saying goodbye, actually, um, one important thing to notice when we use um, elastoplastic models or elastic models is that there, there will be differences in the distribution and in the values of the stresses. So in here, for example, you see the results of the isotropic bilinear elastoplastic model. And on the right, you see the results of the isotropic linear elastic model in terms of von Mises stresses. So you see the differences. The maximums have uh, been reduced in less than 50%. So what we have in the elastic, in the linear elastic isotropic model is 0 0.29, almost 0 0.29 uh, megapascals. And the maximum for the isotropic bilinear elastoplastic model is 0 0.12 megapascals. This is because this model allows, um, is simulating a material that is able to plastify, so to transfer stresses to the vicinities of the elements that have reached the, um, the yield limits. So the behavior is totally different in terms of stresses, it's going to be different in terms of the strains, and in general the elastoplastic models, if they are well calibrated, they will be uh, giving results that are more similar to reality. The linear elastic um, isotropic models, as the one on the right, are models that are more conservative because they usually give you um, stresses that are bigger than the ones that you will find in a real um, in a real um, structure and in a real soil in this in this particular case. So it's something to take into consideration. Um, depending on the degree of accuracy we need to achieve, we will need to use one model or another. But in general, and um, for problems of soil intera interaction, soil structure interaction, um, for example between piles and soils, elastoplastic model will be more useful because they will give us a more accurate idea of the level of stresses and deformations in the soils around the piles and the settlements of the piles, which is uh, one of the most important things we need to find out with these models. Thank you very much.